Okay, cool. So a big thank you very much to Ali for joining us and for joining us in the chat tonight. Super awesome uh, to learn about all the new tools um, for artists in Unity 2017. And so we are going to open things up to the chat. If you guys have any questions, put them in the chat. I will do my best to answer them. Um, and of course, Ali uh, is here to help us as well. And I'll try to read out any uh, relevant answers just so you all can hear if you missed it in the chat. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody. Super, super fun to have you all here. I would also love to hear uh, any feedback on this format. What do you think? Uh, this kind of mix of live and pre-recorded. Is it, is it fun? Is it not fun? Does it make it better, worse? Um, what do you think? Um, so Powdery Mirror asks, I'm curious about the normals calculation section. It made quite a big difference, but is that Unity calculating the normals itself rather than an embedded map made in the DCC tool? My understanding of that, and I think that Ali can maybe clarify this or confirm it, is that the... There are two options in which Unity is calculating the normals, right? Uh, which I, which now I now immediately forgot the name of. And then, or you can say preserve the normals from the DCC package, right? So there's a couple of options for different calculations in Unity, or just say preserve the ones um, from the DCC tool. Uh, yes, as Ali says, yes, it's the calculate mode. So to be used if you don't have normals you are happy with from import, right? So if you already have your normals set up, you can use those from your DCC package, and if not, you can calculate them in Unity. Rames44B says, sometimes watching Unity Tech make mistakes in real time is good, since I make some of the same mistakes. <laughs> yes, I know. This is, there's less mistakes in this format. That's true, actually. That is a real downside of it. A lot of the major comedy of this stream is me making stupid programming mistakes, uh, and we do not get that in this format. <laughs> Although I missed a video, right? There still are some mistakes, but they're, they're less fun. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I agree. All right. Uh, okay, Mira says, if you did a pre-recorded series on end-to-end -end light mapping, ooh, setting up UVs, baking a light map, settings for real-time GI, et cetera, on something more complex, I'll send you all a keg. Whoa. Um, Light mapping, it's funny, you may have guessed why I've never tried to do light mapping live on the stream because it can be so time consuming to, to bake the results, right? And if you get it wrong, you have to do it again and so on. So that's actually why I've never done a light mapping oriented stream, plus the fact that I'm not super good at it. Um, but it, that would be a nice topic for a pre-record. Uh, that's actually a really good point because we could cut out all the long bake times. Um, that's a really good point. Uh, Richie Rich 78 asks, Matt, thought on the current state of VR? Um, what are my thoughts on the current state of VR? I, I think that it's very interesting the way the space is growing and the, the mix of kind of AR, VR, MR, you know, people are starting to call it XR as opposed to VR, right? Kind of like spatial, real-time 3D stuff, whether it's in an augmented layer or a, or a total virtual layer. Uh, I think that is really, really cool and interesting. And I can see my, if you wanted to ask me to make like a bet on the future of all this stuff in the next year or two, I would bet that it's going to be the AR stuff that's going to take a lot of attention because I feel like it's, you know, it runs on phones. It's really easy for people to, you know, everybody loves Snapchat filters, right? People are already using all kinds of augmented tools. Uh, and so I think that's going to be like an easier one uh, to commercialize and for people to get behind. We just saw today Magic Leap released some interesting uh, kind of preview of their product, the creator edition of their product, which is like a set of goggles with a, a computer pack that goes on your belt, which is kind of interesting. So a totally untethered, uh, no PC required solution, which is pretty exciting. I don't know. There's so much hype around that. I don't know what it's going to be like, but it's interesting. Um, yeah, that's my, that's my thought about it. But I think that like, we're going to have to, none of this stuff I think is going to get to like full blown consumer adoption anytime soon. I think it's going to take a, everything is going to take a while before it gets really commercial. 
Um, people have to figure out how to author content for the, this kind of new medium. Oh, nice. Thank you, uh, Rames 44B. Rames says, personally, I resonate with you, Matt, since what you do is close to my own comfort level, but the point about bringing in other talent is a very good one. Yeah, I agree. I think it'd be cool. I mean, hopefully it's just more, more great stuff, right? I want to keep doing the kind of stuff that I do as well. I'll be doing, the next one that I'm doing, by the way, plug, 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 is uh, January 24th. I'm going to be doing a, a Vuforia AR session. Uh, where we're going to be making a little AR-based game, which is going to be super fun. Um, and, oh, actually, this is worth mentioning. The other exciting thing that I'm working on is I'm working with some of the other members of the evangelism team around the world. So China, Brazil, Mexico, uh, to start doing these broadcasts in their local languages. So pretty soon, I mean, some of you guys... You guys are all here for the English broadcast, right? So you're obviously speak English, but uh, but there will be Spanish, Portuguese, and Chinese broadcasts uh, going out as well. And actually, the guys in China are already doing it and doing a great job. Uh, if you speak Chinese, you might be interested to know. You probably already know about it. But anyway, I'm, I think it's kind of exciting. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, yes, this is a great point. GM Liquid Media mentions the Neon Challenge. If you guys don't know about this, uh, I highly recommend that you uh, get to know. It's a really cool challenge being sponsored by Unity based on the neon. Here, actually, I'll put it on screen for a sec. On the screen. Here we go. It's the web page. Um, the neon challenge. Hold on. We're, let's, well, whatever. It's fine. Um, is basically, if you haven't seen this piece, Neon, uh, it's a really cool little short animation that's made all with content from the asset store and using timeline, cinema machine, and the post-processing stack um, to create this kind of awesome cyberpunk vibe. And so we are running this challenge where you can win twenty thousand U.S. dollars. What? I know. Can you believe it? It's amazing. I should enter this, but I can't because I work for Unity. Um, but yeah, check it out. Oh, here's some of the content from my team. Um, check it out. Really, really cool. Basically, make something like this, right? Make a real-time environment scene uh, with this kind of cyberpunk theme or futuristic theme, let's say, to keep it, keep it open. Um, and get a chance to win lots of money. Pretty cool. GM Liquid Media recommends the Blacksmith package download for light mapping as a good start. Yes, um, I agree. Definitely check that out. Uh, Annie 2018 asks, is Vuforia 7 available in Unity 2017.3? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. They shipped, well, actually, let me confirm that. Let me look at the re release notes. I think it was in there because uh, I was looking at the release notes before, but let me just confirm. 2017.3. I know that I was actually talking to Vinny, the evangelist from Euphoria, because we're planning this live session in January, on January 24th, and he was saying that they were working to get Euphoria 7 into 2017.3, and I just want to make sure that it actually landed and that it's not coming in a patch release, because that's also possible. Let's see... Yep, nope, Vuforia 7 support. Here, I'll put it back on the screen. Vuforia 7 is supported with Unity 2017.3 support for Vuforia 7. You can build cross-platform AR apps. Uh, and yeah, 7 introduces model targets. So I showed this a little bit actually before the stream started, but I'll plug it again because we're going to do this next month. Um, this is a super cool tech where basically you can recognize this is a camera shot of a 3D printed plastic little moon lander and then they're overlaying the same 3D model over the 3D printed thing and you can see it gets this like cool superheated uh, effect. It's kind of incredible the stuff that they're doing. Um, and along with this uh, ground plane, whoop, whoa, <laughs> I grabbed the wrong window. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this ground, pra ground plane technology, um, which is super, super cool. Uh, and yeah, I recommend that you check it out. Cool. Some other folks working on the Neon Challenge. Nice. Yeah. 
I, it, well, uh, but Jesus mod says everything is going to look like Blade Runner. You know, I've seen some stuff coming in and there's a cool diversity of, of vibes some different ideas coming in. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be Blade Runner. It it can just be futuristic. I think is the is the vibe. Ah, yes, Alan Matano mentions this importing process skips an important topic that is painting the textures. I recommend the useful Substance Painter and real time live updater plugin tool. It's a great point. Um, duly noted. I think that's something that maybe we can do in the future. Uh, I'm trying to reach out to some of the people who create other tools that artists use uh, to try to get them get them on here and get them involved as well, because we're definitely trying to do a better job here at Unity of, of supporting artists uh, and the whole pipeline, right? We know that it's, you know, it's not just about Unity by in a vacuum. Um, GM Liquid Media says, the corporation I'm working with might start using Unity for professional video animations and TV commercials. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I think that's something that we're starting to get more and more people interested in, right? The uh, With stuff like the Atom videos and, and working with, like, film directors like Neil Blomkamp, you know, the people are starting to see some of the potential of real-time 3D uh, in terms of a production process, right? You don't have to render everything. You can quickly make changes and preview things. Uh, and we're starting to get to that point where the visual quality of kind of high-end real-time 3D is is really starting to approach, you know, what, what people want to see in those kind of contexts. So I think that's super exciting and interesting. Um, uh, Averall asks, how to use Unity for architectural visualization renders? You know, short answer is I don't know. Um, the slightly longer answer is I know there are people doing it already for fly-throughs and kind of... Um, visualization stuff the i think that ollie was talking earlier about kind of the best way to bring in autocad type data or data from other sort of 3d applications that are not game or i don't know what the word to industrial 3d applications maybe is the word i'm using looking for and that a lot of the time you're going to end up converting stuff to fbx to bring it into unity um I think that's probably going to be the way you're going to go, but I'm really at the limits of my knowledge about that one. Yep. As Ollie says, export an FBX, bake some lighting, and animate some cameras and build to your platform. I think that's a pretty concise and excellent explanation. So, Averall, the we do have now, let me actually look for it, Unity, what are we calling it, Unity Frame Recorder? I think it's the name of it. There is now, and it, yeah, is this, this is it. Okay, check it out. It's on GitHub still. It's not like in full release. Um, I'll link it in the chat. Um, this frame recorder technology, I think we'll go into full release in one of the next versions, but basically it's something we showed in the keynote at Unite Europe, um, that's relatively new, but basically a way to export full quality frames out of Unity for those kind of offline render uh, purposes. Ali, thanks so much for being here. Everybody give Ali a big round of applause. Really appreciate your participating and thank you for recording the uh, presentation. Super, super awesome. And uh, yeah, I'm also going to wind things down. Uh, I'm going to... Um, cut my mic. Uh, I'll keep the chat open as I'm packing up. So if you have any last questions, throw them in there. But thank you all so much for coming out. It's always great to see you. Welcome to everybody coming for the first time and always great to see the regulars as usual. Um, and I will be back uh, in January. You can check out the live schedule. We've got a session on 2D game kits and a session on Vuforia scheduled in January that are both going to be really cool uh, here with yours truly. Uh, and yeah, thanks again for watching. You can uh, connect with us on social media if you want to. I'm at Matt Merrifish. My name is Matt Shell. Adam Buckner, who joined us in the chat, is at The Ant Ranch. And Matt Gamble is also a member of our team uh, who helps us with videos and all kinds of cool stuff. So you should check him out as well. So yeah, thanks everybody. And I will see you in the new year. Bye.